would match in a triangle, F, G, H. K is the midpoint of G, H. So let's just visualize over right here. F, G, H. And they're saying K is the midpoint of G, H. So what type of segment is F, K? Well, this segment would be uh, the erratic, uh, this segment would actually be, hold on, let me test this. This looks like an altitude so far, but it could be something else, like a perpendicular bisector. So, let me test it with a different type of triangle. F, G, H, and K was the midpoint. So now, we can draw over here. And it's definitely not a perpendicular bisector, but hmm, let's see, what else could it be? It can't be an altitude, can it? Well, it could be an altitude. Let's try it another way. That's not what I wanted. So, if we now try this, then the altitude would look like this. But the midpoint or the median would look like this. It has to connect the K. So we have to remember, K is the midpoint and F is like the tip of the top, the melting top, remember? So that means that it has to be a median. So number two, the sides of a triangle are like six, eight, and 10. The triangle can be classified as well, first of all, we can obviously cross off equilateral because if it was equilateral, it would have all sides the same. We could get to acute and obtuse. Uh, let's see. Well, acute can be scalene, which this triangle clearly is, and obtuses can do that too. But I'm going to try right for now. So what can we do to verify if it's a right triangle or not? Well, we could use the Pythagorean theorem because it only works on right triangles. Otherwise, we may need to turn somewhere else. So, let's see. 6, 8, and 10. So, obviously, 10 would be the largest side, so it goes in C, and 6 and 8 are really interchangeable for A and B. And I think that will give us something well, but uh, let's see. 36 plus 64 equals 100. That should have worked. The 6 and 4 make, uh, must mean that the uh, last digit is 0, which is right. Yep, it's 100. Which means this satisfies the requirement for being a right triangle. Thus, it must be right, because this procedure did not work on any other type of triangle. The angles of a triangle are 6x plus 6 degrees, 8x minus 8 degrees, and 12x degrees. The class of, uh, to, to a triangle can be classified as, well, in an equilateral, all of these angles would theoretically be the same. Or they would have to be the same. But they're not. They can't. And second of all, uh, and we also, okay, so that means we can cross out equilateral. What about obtuse? Obtuse, well, uh, we could try that. So, we don't really know anything about, wait a second, wait a second. I think there's one thing I forgot to teach you during our little theorem select the part in triangles. Basically, it's called the isosceles rule and it's congruent. So, it says that if two angles are congruent, the sides opposite to them will also be congruent. You draw two lines to distinguish. So, the same applies to the sides. If two sides are congruent, then the angles opposite them will also be congruent. Hmm. Well, this doesn't just apply to isosceles. This applies to everything. So, let's try an obtuse. So, in obtuse, the largest angle would be, well, 12x, obviously. And then you would have 6x plus, wait, could 12x degrees be the largest? Hmm, we'll have to see, we'll have to see.
So, I'm gonna parentheses this or just point at it. So, say 6x plus 6. And we have 8x plus minus 8 over here. So, how could that work? Well, hmm, this looks pretty tricky. What about isosceles? No, it can't be isosceles because if it was isosceles, since two of the sides are congruent, two of the angles must be congruent as well. But it looks like they aren't. Which means we'll have to cross out isosceles as well. Scalene could work because remember that rule we had in scalenes, every single angle or uh, every single uh, side is different. And since every single angle is different over here, then every sign must be different over here as well. So, we just, and this must be different, and this must be different. See? So that means that it must be scaly. We can't identify whether it's obtuse or not. So we'll cross that out. Scaling. Alright. So, one, four, four so far. Four. This looks like the first one with an actual diagram. So, line M is parallel to line N. Um, so, the angle ABC, uh, so I kind of tore this M over here in half. So, this, so this is N. And ABC is isosceles, while AC is equal to BC, so you probably put these here. So what is the measure of angle 3? Well, we know that this is 53. So, since we also know that this is isosceles, 1 and 2 must be congruent. So, let's see. What do we have here? Well, we could try making a right triangle by drawing the line upward from B. So that would mean that we could have three angles. So we have 53 over here. This one would have to be 90 because we're perpendicular. And then we have a mystery angle. So 53 plus 90 plus land equals 180. Which means that land is 180 minus 53 minus 90 which comes out to be approximately, I'm sorry for using the calculator, 37. Now, how does this help us? Well, you've got to remember that this new line we drew is perpendicular to line AB and line N over here as well. So, that means the 37 plus this mysterious 2 equal to 90. So we'll find out what the measure of angle 2 is. Well, hmm. So how can we do this? Oh, 90 minus 37. 53. Hmm. That's cool, actually. Because that means that 1 is also 53. Because since these two sides are congruent, it tells us AC is equal to BC. That means that these two angles must be congruent as well. <coughs> so now we can find number three. 180 minus 53 minus 53 is our missing angle. So what is 53 times two? Now 180 minus that and 74. So our mystery angle looks to be 74. Could there be something wrong with our calculations? Let's try and check for any inaccuracies. 74 hmm, doesn't seem correct. Let's see. 53 plus 74. 127. Yeah, this seems somewhere about right. So I'm going to pick 74. It's a bit risky, sure. But I mean, gotta take your chances, right? Mm -hmm. okay. Alright, so, uh, wait, 
You can't just done that so much easier. Never mind that. Anyway, five. Line CY is an angle bisector in ABC. To make it more clear, I'm once again going to move the diagram somewhere else. I want that shape. So, what is the measure of angle A, they're asking? So, CY is an angle bisector. So, apparently it is. Uh, so, let's see. Oh yeah, it's bisecting this angle over here, angle C. So, let's see, see what we can do over here. Well, uh, we could assume this is isosceles, do stuff from there, but that would be a bit too risky, wouldn't it? All right, all right, I got an idea. So, 71, so these two angles together must be supplementary. So 180 is 71, plus this mystery angle that I have drawn. So 180 minus 71 is this mystery angle, which I'm not gonna use the calculator this time. It's probably, hopefully, 109. I'm gonna use the calculator this time. I have the impulse to 109. So, 109, and now, the thing is, since this is an angle bisector, if we find out what this is, we'll also find out what this is. So that's good. So let's highlight this with a question mark first. So 109 plus 23 plus our question mark is 180. Because, remember, the sum of all angles in a triangle is 180. So now, you add 109 and 23, and you subtract 180 from that, and you get 48. So that means that this angle is 48. Good. But that's not the answer yet. We know this must be 48 as well. So 48 plus 71 plus blank is equal to 180. Uh, we could also just do the easier way, combine these two 48 and do the triangle as a whole, but A, who cares about easy? Uh, plus 71. 180. Alright, so it looks like our answer has to be 61. Which is an answer choice. Thankfully. Six. Triangle RST is a right triangle, and the right angle is RST over here. And the triangle PSR is equilateral, which helps us a little bit. And we have to find the measure of angle T over here. Well, first of all, we definitely have to use the fact that this is 60, this has to be 60, and this has to be 60. From that info, since uh, P, PSR and TSP, uh, since TS, since RST is 90, so we know that angle RST is the sum of its parts. So it is equal to angle PSR and mm, angle TSP. So what is PSR? Well we know PSR it's 60. And we know RST it's 9. So 90 is 60 plus MTSP. So TSP 60 from both sides is found out to be 30. So this over here, 30. Keep that in mind. So, hmm, this looks to be an isosceles triangle. But I'm not going to trust my instinct like that now. Am I? Wait a second. 60? This thing is 90. So let's draw the whole angle for a sec. Since this is 60 and this is 90, that means that the last angle must be 60 plus 90 plus square, which is our last angle, is 180. So, we get 150 plus our mystery angle is 180. We subtract 150 from both sides, and our mystery angle is must be 30. I knew it. So, I want to pick 3, which is 30. And now... We have a new problem, and I believe we're almost 
the three we're starting for. Yeah, we definitely are. Uh, so, ABC is isosceles, AC is parallel to BE, AC is equal to BC, and the measure of angle A is 70, and we have to find CBE. That's a lot to take in. Well, we're going to find it, don't worry. So, first of all, ABC is isosceles. So, that means that this is 70 as well. So, next, uh, what can we do next? Well, this is a bit tricky. But since E is parallel to AC, logically, because of angles of opposite interiors, this must be 70 as well. And this, these three are supplementary angles. So 70 plus 3 plus 70 is equal to 180. So 140 plus our initial angle is 180. So we subtract 140 from both sides and we get 40. Which means our mystery angle is 40. Alright. So we're making progress. In fact, we have four problems left to do. Oh, number eight. Oh god. It looks gargantuan. But thankfully, it's actually really simple. Or is it? Alright, so they want us to find the measure of angle J over here. And obviously to find that, we have to find what X it is. So they give us actual new, a new a numeral with no X's over here for 156 and 117. But not really much else. This is trouble. Well, we know that 156 and another mystery angle over here must be supplementary, straight line. 156 plus 3 equals 18. Now we subtract 156 from both sides and we get 24. This is 24 thus. And since the amount of the sum of angles in a triangle is 180, we take 117 over here plus 24 plus our missing angle over here and we equate that to 180. So now we add these and it gets us 141 and now we subtract 141 from both sides. It should give us 29. Nope, I'm wrong. It's 39. So this is 39. Hmm. Good. So now that means these two angles are supplementary. And what, from what we learned, we can tell that these two angles are actually congruent. So, remember going back to the lines relations video? So, we get 2x plus 15 is equal to 39. So, if we subtract 15 from both sides, we get 2x is 24, meaning x is 12. So, now, we just have to um, plug in x and find what it is. 8 plus 6 must be 54. Nice.